Undoubtedly there is. Um, we see it in our collaborations with uh, the University of Ancona, where we do a great deal of work in analysing raw data, which takes a little bit of the art away from the business, if you, if you think of it that way. But at the same time, you get the uh, pleasure back when you see the sound engineers actually putting together the maquettes. The idea is get it as perfect as possible on a numerical status, okay? Get your components as uniform, if you like, as possible and then put your touch of art. It's like that, uh, that pinch of salt that just makes the plate right. One thing's for sure, the OEM boys are working hard in trying to make their units as different as possible, which is, which is fair. We see it in requests that are ever more, let me say, complex. Their requirements are becoming more and more stringent, they're becoming more and more defined. They are beginning to understand more about how the loudspeaker works and what they want from it. Our collaboration on an OEM level is really tuned into understanding their requirements and giving our added value, which is our experience. All the raw materials are going up, steel, everything's going up, and neodymium is showing its terrible head again. So we are preparing for that. We are foreseeing that neodymium prices are getting variable on the wrong side of the scale, if you like. The smaller speakers tend to be very high runners, but quite simply because they're used in applications where you use a lot of them. I mean, if we take a look at the very popular column systems that are used in portable systems for, for street buskers to uh, systems that are used in churches, these columns that will use maybe three, four, eight, 16, three inch speakers, clearly it's quite quick to put together a large number of units. And you, and you get orders with very interesting numbers you know, stuck, stuck on them. So yeah, that certainly is the small speakers are going very well. And on the other side, we have a, a lot of 12 inch speakers and 18 inch speakers going out of the door. China is going very well as a market. The market has changed racket radically since, uh, since I personally have been working on that market. We've gone from incredibly high numbers of 12-inch speakers used in in the VIP KTV business, which is very much a Chinese, now slightly Vietnam kind of product. Very difficult to uh, satisfy a lot of the requests for that kind of product. That market has switched over to um, a lot of line arrays for live music, uh, a lot of line of live events. I mean, that seems to be a trend that I'm seeing at the moment. We've got a very successful eight inch coaxial and we're moving forward in size. Clearly we understand that there is a market requirement out there for 12 and 15 inch and we have developed a 12 inch coaxial. There's a lot of effort, time, resources, investments being made to put the production process together because we tend to like to make products that have a very sound mechanical conformation. Uh, they need to be as compact as possible so that the uh, cabinet designers can work well with the overall size of the product so it's not too difficult to apply. To be quite blunt, we do not take a compression driver and stick it on the back of a woofer. We integrate as much as possible the two products to make them a single unit. We want to be able to get from the design phase to the prototype phase as quickly and as securely as possible and this requires technology. This requires the combination of technology and know-how to allow us to mould, to work the data and understand what can be an optimised magnetic field, for example. I mean, how can we really use as much of the magnet as possible, as little steel as possible, to keep a combination of costs down, to keep the weight down? So, making the balance, getting the recipe right, that's where we're pointing at the moment. Mm -hmm.